always a party at Patchworks. Let's get this party started. Hoot hoot. Hi everyone, this is Julie from Patchworks and I am so excited that you're joining us for another Must Sew TV tonight on Thursday, September 16th. We have preempted our regularly scheduled Moda University. Moda University is going to be on September 30th. And you know what? We have some really, really special things planned for you and a few things that are shipping in that you will not want to miss. Tonight, we are going to be sharing with you some tips and tricks on the Gather No Moss quilt along and we have a whole bunch of new stuff to show you, a few new quilts that Kim Schaefer sent over to share, and I'd be more than happy to answer any questions that you have. Tammy's at the computer, Frank's at the cameras, so just let us know if you have any questions along the way, and I'd like to thank you for joining us tonight. So, for the Gather No Moss, if you don't know what I'm talking about, there is this amazing quilt along that used these great cave fabrics. And there's a whole Facebook group that's dedicated to it, people around the world making this, and some celebrities that Free Spirit has brought together to be able to share some inspiration on how to use these fabrics, quilting out of the box. And one of the things that I've been talking about with some of our customers have been that maybe we didn't have as much instruction on the actual quilt blocks itself, too much color theory. So we're gonna take a step back and talk a little bit about the block and then um, you'll be actually seeing us working on the two different color stories so that these quilts are going to be hanging and we have kits available in the store so that you can make one of these or just grab some really yummy cave fabric and then we have a designer collector bag for you to go along with it. So Frank's going to show us the block. So we have the main block here. It's a rolling stone block and it's actually a fairly simple block. It is a compound nine patch. And what do I mean by a compound nine patch? I mean that there are four, not four, there, it's a three by three grid. One, two, three, one, two, three. And so you make these subunits and then you put it together like a nine patch, okay? How are you going to do it? Well, you can refer to the pictures in the pattern for working on the actual combinations of fabric. But one of the things that the different celebrities have encouraged you to do is to play with the fabric where you play and create your own combinations. So today we're not going to be talking about how to put those fabrics together, but instead how we actually make the units, okay? So it is a 13 and a half inch block is what it will measure. And we have a center block here. And then we have a rail. And you see here how the rail is as tall, but is narrower than the square in the center. And then we also have a square in the square component that is our corner, okay? So there are three different components to every single block. So the square in the square should be as wide as our strip, and our strip should be as tall as our center square. for putting our square and the square together because that's actually where we end up with the most challenge. I'm just gonna take this guy away here. So the square and the square, we're gonna start with 
a four and a half inch square of fabric, okay? And then we are going to use connector squares for the corner. So there are some other ways of making this block where you start with a small square and then you put triangles around it, but we're making it the easy peasy way, okay? So we're using the connector square method. Now when we're using the connector square method, what do I like to do? Well, I like my quick quarter ruler. So someone came in the store this week and asked for the Julie ruler, and I was so confused. I'm like, what do you mean the Julie ruler? And they're like, that blue thing that she uses all the time. So I did not create this ruler. This is the quick quarter ruler, and this particular one is manufactured by Quilters Rule, which is actually a Wisconsin company, so that's pretty cool. But there are other variations of this that would be just as effective. And what we're going to do with these squares is that we are going to line this up. Let me move this over here. We're going to line it up and position it from point to point and use our favorite ceramic lead pencil and mark. Now, I may not be using a strong enough lead here for you to see this on screen. Oh, look at that, I did. You could use a different method if you chose, um, but this is how I mark it. So for this particular one, we are marking from point to point. You would do that for all four tri or squares. It is very important to mark your squares, okay? even if you've been doing this a billion years. And yes, I do still mark my squares, unless if I'm sewing on live camera where I get nervous. I know, can you believe it when I get nervous? And then I cut crazy and do whatever. So that's why we're doing this again, where we're using things to the exact size, okay? So what we do is that we'd mark, I like to work in opposite corners. And you know what, before you even start on the whole rest of the quilt. If you are skill building, it is great to just make this square in a square to make sure that you are coming out at the right sizes. Okay, so we would have, we could do this side and this side. Okay. Now when you're sewing, what you might want to do, depending on the confidence of your stitching, is if you're going to sew if you're concerned that you are coming up short, you would sew to the outside of this line. Now I do my best to sew right on the line, but if you have to go one way or the other, you'd wanna go to this side of the line. Does that make sense? Okay, so what am I talking about? I'm talking about that when we're sewing, we want to, when we flip it back, if we sew it exactly on the center there, this should cover the edge of our square, okay? So you wanna make sure before you trim it off that excess, because we like to trim off the excess so we don't have extra bulk, but we wanna make sure that it goes all the way to the edge. Does that make sense? Okay, question. Kathy is asking what size are the corner squares that we are using? That is a very good question, and it is a two and a half inch square. And we have another question. Okay, so the, we have, so we are going to make sure that 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 works. If it doesn't, we stop. Okay, stop. And then what we would do is that we would evaluate before we would move on. Okay, so we're going to do both sides and then we can continue on the other side where we repeat with these two edges. And once again, make sure that our corners cover if they don't, it won't work, okay? So we are going to make sure that we have good piecing 
and so that everything comes out correctly. Okay, so what you want to make sure is that before you trim, that your square would finish or it would measure the size of the square that you're starting with. And this would apply to any square in the square that you're working with. Does that make sense? Okay. The strip rails that are the two strip sets that we're putting together, sometimes what you would be doing is actually just putting two giant strips together, sewing them, and then subcutting. In this case, the pattern has you cut all of your rectangles out, just so. And then matching them together, and so that way you can play a little bit more with the fabric. If you were going for uh, power sewing and speed, that is where you could absolutely just sew strip sets together and then do your subcuts. But in this pattern, we're being methodical, playing with the fabric, so we're going ahead and sewing rectangles together two at a time. I do love pressing everything open. It lays really super nice and flat. When I'm working with these K fabrics, I do starch my fabric before I start. So in this case, I actually didn't starch my fabric. I just cut crazy because I wanted to make sure that I had some squares for our little demo part. But for everything else, I starch before I get started and before I cut. As you're putting your block together, so you'd be putting your nine patch together, and you're laying it out, and you're putting it together, do, 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 just like that, right? Got to move it down so you can see it. As you're putting it all together, you can imagine here, right? I don't have all of my parts to assemble it. I should actually bring my whole block back. If your block doesn't measure what the pattern says it should, and your subunits all measured what they said they would, and you sew a second block, and it measures the exact same as your first block, don't worry, okay? It is your quilt. And that is awesome, and you can, so you can just have your blocks m measure whatever they are, and you can cut your sashing to go along with them. So that is, while we always strive to match the pattern, when you have a single block pattern, you seriously can have it measure what it measures. So I know that sounds crazy, but, um, and that's the exact same advice that I give you for borders. So when you get to the end of a quilt, don't simply blindly follow the measurement that the pattern tells you. I want you to measure your quilt before you cut that border, because at the end of the day, whatever your quilt is, is what your quilt is and it doesn't matter what the pattern says because the pattern can't change what your quilt actually looks like. And now we have a question. Do you use starch or another method? Deborah was wondering. So Deborah wants to know what kind of starch that I like to use. And the starch that I prefer is the June Taylor Quilter Starch Savvy. No, they are not paying me to say this. Uh, it is a clear starch alternative. And I like this particular product. It is clear and scent free. And the reason why I like a clear and scent free product is that it's not adding any color to my fabric. And you know, we just work so, so hard to make sure that we don't have any extra anything on our fabric. I don't necessarily wanna add a purple dye to it, even if uh, lavender might s smell super pretty. Uh, I know and I'm confident that I'm not going to be adding any color to this product. 
There are many other great starch products out there. This is just the favorite one that I use. And when you are using this product or any other starch products, what you wanna make sure that you do is spray, 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 spray. Let it saturate in. And I always joke, I say I spray everything, I go get a cup of coffee, and then I come back and then I press it, okay? Because if you just spray and then iron, it's all gonna evaporate away and it's not gonna have the same effect as if you let it saturate into the fibers. So that is your starching tip of the day. Any other questions? No other questions right now. So um, I hope this provided a little bit of clarity. I know I didn't give you all the secrets to the entire block here uh, that I do have a pattern here for you in our Gather No Moss kits, which we still have available in stock and be looking in the coming weeks for a beautiful quilt here in the shop and for inspiration on how you can use your K fabrics or other fabrics to put together a beautiful rolling stone quilt. When you are working with, the one thing I also have a little note here today to talk to you about, and one of the things that the celebrities have been talking about is truly playing with your fabric. So they're worried less about the construction of the blocks and more about playing with the fabric. And if you've noticed, a lot of them have been using this beautiful flannel grid, which we have available in the store, and it comes on the bolt. This is the cafe design wall, so you can create a, de a design wall all for yourself. We recommend you get four yards, right? Four yards, so it's a two yard by two yard segment that you can just hang on your wall, and it's very nice that it just, you can stick things right to it. It's a nice fluffy flannel. Of course, if you wanted to make pajama pants out of this, by all means, go ahead and do so. But to make a simple design wall, this is really nice. Also, if you wanted to play with a whole bunch of projects, I could imagine that you could get several chunks of this and then just hang them. And then if you needed to, you could roll it up and set that project aside until you wanted to come back to it. So you might need bolts of this, but we have this available in store. And if you aren't finding it, just let us know. All right. Now we are going to talk about, oh, we need to give you a prize first. Okay, so um, we have, a Frank went into the prize bin and he found a bunch of really amazing prizes today. And so the first one we're gonna look at is someone is going to get da, 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 this really cool box of essential colors, Cosmo threads, and an artisan batik char pack. Woohoo! All right, so the first question of the day is what is the name of the block that we talked about? Da -da -da. So you have until Friday night to answer this, and we'll do a drawing on Saturday morning to win this beautiful prize. All right, now what we're going to do is we are going to talk about some more of the fall festive festive fall quilts which is a cool book by Kim Schaefer I'm going to hop over to our Halloween and autumnal fabric area to show you a few more of the quilts that she dropped off so I will head right over So I love, love, love this quilt. And I showed you a few of these projects last week. The book here is the Festive Fall Quilts. And it is 21 fun applique projects for Halloween, Thanksgiving, and more. We have some of them hanging in our foyer. I needed to order more books because it was so popular last week. And I said, hey, Kim, if you have any more samples, make sure to drop them off when you drop off some more books because we got to show them and they're just so fun and so amazing. So she dropped some off and I'm going to share them with you. So the first one I'm going to share with you is Just Batty. 
So this is a fun table runner here, and it is a pieced backing with applique bats. And so all the orange scraps that you have laying around the house, the more fabrics, the better. Goes together super cute, super quick. And what I love about her designs here are that you really can use these elements in any project. She has the full size of the pattern in the back here that you can pull out. And if you wanted to put that bat on a placemat, if you want to put it on a quilt, if you want to put it on something else, you absolutely can. And I like bats. And there's even like that Sesame Street song with Count Von Count. And I'm not going to sing it for you, but it's called Batty Bat. And you might want to look it up on YouTube because it's really fun. And I apologize because once you hear it, you are going to sing it every single time you see a bat. So you're welcome. Then we have Stacked Jacks. This is another fun quilt here. It's a either a wall project. You could also use it as a table topper. All sorts of jack-o'-lanterns here with different faces. And this is pieced black squares, a whole bunch of different blacks with applique squares on top and they're kind of wonky squares so you can just take your halloween scraps and play with them again because you know sometimes you have just a little bit of this and that left over you could use tonals if you had leftovers of this from a different project that would be really fun too and then of course you have the different jack-o'-lanterns applique on your on your the other thing I do want to show you is that this particular project, I don't know if you can see the thread. Can you see the thread on this? It is edge to edge quilted. Can you see that? And it goes over the jack-o'-lanterns. And I know sometimes we like to custom quilt and fussy around all of this, but if that's not in your skill set, don't worry about it. You can really just quilt over it choose a thread that's not going to overwhelm your fabric and it's great okay so don't worry about is there a rule that you can't quilt over an applique and the answer is no there is not a rule that you can't you want to quilt in whichever way makes you happy and gets it done now we have turkey legs so turkey legs is super fun speaks for itself and then we have scattered leaves and scattered leaves is a very versatile pattern I this here could be your table topper I could also see you choosing one leaf framing it out to make placemats to go along with it. You could make one and turn it into a mug mat. I really love, love, love her different shapes. These and many more projects come from the Festive Fall Quilts book by Kim Schaefer. It's available in store and online. And we do have these quilts as well as the quilts that I showed you last week on display for a few weeks. So I invite you to come on in and check them out. Now we have some new fabrics that we're going to show you. So while we are walking back, the next trivia question is, what was your favorite quilt or project that I've showed you from the Festive Fall Quilt Book? Ooh, ah. And the winner of that prize will get of that question, we'll get a super cool, this is a tape measure that's also a necklace. Super cool, I bet you don't have one of those. And then this is some shimmer happy scraps. Ooh, so you could make something really fun with that. So question is, what was your favorite project from Festive Fall Quilts? All right, so we've been getting in lots and lots and lots of fabric, which is super fun. And 
uh, fabric I'm going to show you first are some hummingbirds. So these hummingbirds, the fabric line is Hummingbird Heaven. And there's a few different scales here. And then we have some gorgeous flowers. Look at those flowers. I can just see them in my garden and watch the hummingbirds just suck the nectar out of the blossoms. Beautiful. So these are from Studio E and available in store and online. I really like how this print is so colorful and it could play really well with batiks. It also could play really well with um, some of the prints from uh, one of my favorite new designers that goes under the name Create Joy Project. Next, we have Safari Sunrise. So Safari Sunrise is by Studio E. And there's a lot of prints in this one. So I'm just going to lay some of them up here. And it is a really cute juvenile line with those now colors. So we have elephants and zebras and giraffes, some tigers. What about those zebras that were running around in northern Wisconsin? Oh my goodness, that's craziness. And then we have this one here that's all of our friends all together. And then we have just a couple more move these down. This one here, cute, that has all of them. Little alligators, super cute, or crocodiles, I don't know. Do you have an alligator story? If so, I'd like to hear it. And then these fun dots. Lots of great stuff to help in our novelty room. So we go back and forth with our themes of fabric, and it seems like we're getting in a lot of good novelty fabric these days. There's a question saying, are there charm packs in this one? So this particular project, we don't have any pre-cuts. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten fabrics. Are fat quarter packs interesting to you or only uh, five inch or ten inch square? Or so let me know if there are things other than fat quarter packs that are interesting. Then we have for the outdoorsman fisher person in your life. We have keeping it real, ha, huh, keep it real. And this fabric right here, it's fish. You know, we're, we're in Wisconsin and these are freshwater fish. And so this is super exciting because sometimes the fish that I see in the fabric aren't necessarily the fish that we fish for in the state. So these are, and that was really exciting to me. So that's why I got it. So you have some fishing poles. This one are the little patches here. And there's all sorts of, and it goes different directions. So it's not particularly directional. And then I really like these lake rocks. I think it's really pretty. Or river rocks. Then there is a panel. And Frank, let's look at this from the front. So this one here, I might not be big enough, but I'll show you it half and half. So you can see this, you can either use it whole or cut up the squares and incorporate it that way. And you can see at the bottom there, there's a giant musky. Joel wants to know if there was much search for this piece of fabric for 
Joan wants to know if I'm making a shirt from the fishing fabrics for Frank. I don't know. <laughs> Frank loves his collared shirts, you know. And if you don't know Frank, he doesn't like the co collared shirts. I might make a fish shirt, you never know. So, do you know I have to tell you? Did I tell you this earlier this summer? I caught a muskie, isn't that exciting? So, I'm really excited. I caught a muskie. Okay, so maybe I'm the one that needs a fishing shirt. The lucky fishing shirt. All right. So, now I have a couple more patriotic fabrics that just came in. They aren't necessarily a big line that goes together, but they are really nice go-withs. Some nice crisp stars, some tossed flags, a great, great, great plaid, and some nice stars. And so this plaid, these go-withs would all work really, really well with the patriotic gnomes that we just got in that I'm not showing you right now, but they would all go really, really well with this. Now we have some super scary dinosaurs. Ooh, scary. So realistic and scary. I don't know, I call them scary. They're not scary though. But these are digitally printed, so they have very, in, they have a lot of detail in here. And for your curious dinosaur person, I think this particular print is really, really interesting. A lot of times the dinosaur fabrics that we see are very, very juvenile, and uh, some of the people who are interested in real dinosaurs are sad. So that's why we got this one. I do not know who, which all these species are. And then, oh, look at this, the stacked T-Rex chomp, 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 chomping away. And then we have tossed dinosaurs here running in action. And then we have a giant, giant panel. So I'm not going to be able to show you the whole thing here. Apparently it's over a yard in repeat. But the cool thing about this is that it shows you the species and tells you the name. So this would be an excellent quilt back or it could be cut as a panel. We'll make sure to cut it so we won't sell it to you. It just came off the bolt cut like that, but we would cut in between so that we won't chop anything off. But this would be a great one that you could just use as a pieced back for a quilt. A Trudon. Hmm. Never heard of these. I don't know. I don't know my dinosaurs. But the fabric's pretty cool. This is by Blank Quilting and it is called Tyrannochorus. Tyrannochorus. And I think Tammy is sharing the line for the link for you there. Then we have a bunch, I mean a bunch of new batiks that we've been getting in. It's like batik season, which is really fun. And if you haven't been into the store, we switched around our batik section a little bit and we moved it to the back of the store, which is a change up. We always gotta like to do different things. From Island Batiks, we got in the Dragonfly, and I'm not going to show you all of the amazing prints that we have in because there's just so many and they're so pretty, but I knew we were low on our purples and blues, and so we restocked our purples and blues because those are the most popular colors that we have. And then we also have a whole range of rainbow colors, which are great for the saturated tropical quilts that we often think of when we make our batik quilts. Okay. 
Last but not least, I have some school themed fabrics to share with you. So we have some crayons, and this one I really love that has some technology. Oh, are we going overhead? Overhead. So we have some laptops and uh, calculators, the little Wi Fi guy, some ear pods. And what's really interesting is in the USB drive here, I have a piece of technology fabric from the 90s. And you can imagine that's way, way different. So even from a historical perspective, grabbing a little bit of this fabric could be pretty cool to just stuck, stick in the stash. So you can see the iPhone here, laptops, so that our ancestors, or not our ancestors, our the next generations will be able to see the kind of technology that we are working with and they'll say, what is this? And of course, the painted handprint. So this particular fabric line is called the top of the class and we got a few pieces. It's from Plain Quilting and it is sure to add to your next I Spy or academic themed quilt. We have another arrival this week, which is much anticipated and super exciting. And that is the new Tula Pink Solids, the Unicorn Poop and the Dragon's Breath. So we have those in stock and I am just going to share with you the 22 amazing new fabrics. We have them in packs of 11 for each of the two different distinct collections and they're available individually by the yard as well. Let me grab them so I can share with you. So we have here the beautiful unicorn poop. What a name. Only Tula Pink would be able to get away with naming her fabric Unicorn Poop. So there are 11 beautiful colors. I don't have all of the unique fabric names in front of me. Tammy's including a link to this. We have half yard and fat quarter bundles available on the website. And if you are looking for yard bundles, just let us know. We've custom cut a few of them already. These particular fabrics are part of the continuous Tula Pink Basics. So while you want to make sure that you grab them if you're looking for them now, you don't have to worry about them never being available again. They are going to be available in the future. And then we have the Dragon's Breath, which are the jewel tone fabrics, so a little bit deeper. Two distinct collections that work really well with the Tula print fabrics. Work into her palms and tent stripes and some future collections. I see the lights here working really well with the, so the, you can't see them, they're off screen right now, but the, these guys will work really well with the upcoming line that has the flamingos in it. And then this one works with a lot of the brighter things together. It's just a fabulous collection, which we also have available in 10 inch squares, five inch squares, and I think we have one more two and a half inch strip roll available. You are going to want to grab those pre-cuts sooner than later if you are looking for the five, 10 or two and a half inch strips. Who's excited about these solids? Everyone's cheering, super exciting. Or maybe it's just Tammy cheering, I'm not sure. Could just be Tammy cheering. 
tula, tula. So we do continue. If you don't tune in all the time, we do have our Tula Club. And our next meeting for that will be the first Thursday of the month in October. Oh, excellent. I'm so excited that more of you are, are joining in the Tula chant at home. Tula, Tula. Okay, so a couple other fun things that we have in the shop that we got in are, I know it's not new, new, new in the world, but this is new to us. We have finally gotten in our three yard quilt books. And let's look at these overhead. So Donna Robertson has several different books and we got three of them in here. And they're Easy Does It Three Yard Quilts, Quilts in a Jiffy, and Quick as a Wink Three Yard Quilts. I'll flip them over so that you can see the easy projects. Each of these books are $15.99 and are nice lap quilts. The one other thing that I really like about this particular series of books and patterns are that all of these quilts are very scalable. And what do I mean by that? I mean that if you're saying, Julie, I just want a simple three fabric quilt and I want to make something like this and I want to make, instead of making a throw quilt, I want to make a queen quilt. Well, you absolutely can do this. And because it's such a simple pattern, what we can say is, well, instead of making one of these, you want to make one, two, three, four. So this is, consider this is one fourth of your large bed quilt. So these are easily scalable for making larger projects and helping you with the math for that. So we have these on our book wall. And these have been very popular. I've seen a lot of you come in with them or asking questions about them. So I said, Frank, we need to bring them in. And so he ordered them up and brought them in. And you can now see them at the shop. Gina wants to know if we can get the newest three yard quilt book. And I'm absolutely certain that we can. So Tammy, if you can take a note for us so that we can order it and then we'll let you know when it's in. And did you wanna know Gina when it would arrive in the store? Because Tammy will write your name down and then we can give you a buzz or send you a message to let you know when it is in stock. So I've been doing a lot of talking and I think it is time to do a little bit of show and tell. And Frank is gonna pull up some show and tell to share with us. So let's take a peek and see what you've been sharing on Patchworks Party. First up, we have Joanne. She made one of the Quilt As You Go strip quilts with the cuddle minky and doing using the 10 inch strips that is super fun and i think that there might be some wee ones in the picture so thanks so much for sharing that that's a super quick quilt to make love that pattern next up we have sandra who has been working on a ton of sampler blocks so thanks so much for sharing those sampler blocks with us. Keep up the good work. And if you wanted to see all of Sandra's block, make sure to hop on to our Facebook group, which is Patchworks Party, to be able to check out all of her beautiful blocks. Next up, we have a really cool bag by Sue. So Sue and her daughter-in-law, Carrie, work on a ton of bags and backpacks and other quilting projects. And this is just one of the great ones that we are featuring here on our show and tell. Great job, Sue. Julie is in the Christmas spirit and I love how that quilt goes together. 
with the different size strips and then elements of interest in the center. Super cool. Great job on that quilt and love that you are ahead of the game here. 100 days till Christmas today. Then we have Angie, our the long arm quilter here from Big Bear Quilting. And she has made a really, really awesome Bucks quilt for her son who's in college. And now that he's in college, we can share this quilt with you. And so doesn't matter what the Packers are doing. We still have world champions in the Bucks. Yay! So great quilt and love, love, love that beautiful quilt that you did, Angie. Robin, she put together some Jakarta placemats, you doing the quilt as you go. And that is using the little strip sets that we have here. So we have some great autumnal strip sets that you could put together with the Jakarta placemats. And then Betsy shared with us her spooky skull quilt. So spooky. So she's ready for Halloween. So you guys, I just love how prepared you are for the holidays. We have a great selection of holiday fabric this year and we are continuing to get holiday fabric. So don't worry if you are just getting started, we are getting some brand new holiday fabric. We for both Christmas and Halloween. So don't worry if you think that you've missed out because you haven't. We have some fun stuff coming up. On Saturday, we have National Sew so a Jelly Roll Day. And you might have seen a little bit of stuff about that on social media. We are going to be celebrating in store by sharing with you. We have a brand new sample that we're going to be sharing with you. We are also going to be sharing some quilt patterns with you that will be available for you free to pick up in store on Saturday. And this is the 15th anniversary of the Jelly Roll. What? 15 years? So it's really cool that Frank and I, with Patchworks, share the same anniversary as the Jelly Roll. So, the first Jelly Roll was created in 2006 by Moda Fabrics, and they celebrate the National Sew Jelly Roll Day every third Saturday in September. We will be having a few specials in the store that might be the same number off as the anniversary year. So 15% off on select strip items. You'll have to come to check it out in the store. We're open from nine to four on Saturday and you'll be able to see those and shop those while supplies are available. And we also confirmed, this is for into October, a very exciting event. We are were asked to bring our Patchworks party on the road, woot woot, to the Tosa Quilters Guild on Tuesday, October 19th at 7 p.m. And the super cool thing about it is that you have been invited to join us for this in-person event, free of charge. So I'll be posting details on that for you to be able to sign up to be able to come. It's in the heart of Tosa and it's going to be our first big in-person gathering and that's hosted by the Tosa Quilters Guild. If your group or guild is interested in hosting a patchworks party on the road, please let us know because we would love to be able to share our in-person experience with you. Don't worry, uh, this, our online virtual patchwork party will not be replaced by the guild appearances, so don't worry about that. Okay, so we have one more trivia question for you and then we'll do some show and tell drawings. Okay, so our next trivia question is, how many, how many, what is our question? How many solids are there in the new Tula solids? 
So between our dragon's breath and unicorn poop, I think I just wanted to say unicorn poop one more time, are there, how many solids are there in the new Tula solids that we have available in stock? And the person with who's randomly selected with the right answer for that is going to get um, Make One Hour Gifts book by CNT Publishing. Woohoo! All right. So, any questions for me before we do our show and tell drawing? No questions. Okay. So, I would like to thank you all for joining us tonight. Next week, we will be having our Orphil color builders, and then on September 30th, we are going to be having our Moda University with super special stuff. Stuff you will not want to miss, okay? So really, really exciting. And let's do our drawing. So our drawing, you are going to win an uh, chalk and charcoal coordinate five inch square pack and some neutral thread. Ho ho, super fun. And the winner is Betsy Cracker. Congratulations. So we have a, our Patchworks Party Facebook group that I invite all of you to join where we share our show and tell and be able to also share other things, ask questions from each other, and have a quilting community for our store. Always you can watch any of these episodes on our Facebook page or you can check out our YouTube channel where all of our different videos are available to watch anytime that you'd like. I'd like to thank you for tuning in today. Happy quilting and we'll see you soon. <laughs>